Hi everybody, Bob Schwartz here. I am with Dr. Hyla Cass, who is uh, doing an, an invited presentation at the conference. Uh, Dr. Cass is a pioneer in the use of uh, nutritional supplements to deal with um, psychological and other issues. Hi Hyla, how are you today? I'm great, how are you? Great. So, I, you know, this is an area that I personally uh, feel um, very interested in, feel like I don't know anywhere near enough about. Um, so perhaps you could, you know, in fact, I was listening to, actually, I think I was listening to Bill Maher last night, and he was, made a big comment about how the one thing doctors don't ask is, what do you eat? Uh, you? And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, you and are I what you totally eat. I address that. Excuse me? You know, it, it, it's interesting. I was one of the pioneers in energy psychology, forget about nutrition, and I was doing EMDR and EFT before anyone else, and then I moved on to the nutritional aspect because this brain of ours that we're working so hard to optimize runs on fuel. You know, it's a physical being, it's a three pound organ in our head, in our skull that needs to have, it needs to have fuel, needs to have carbs, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, and if we don't, we are totally shortchanging ourselves. And uh, as therapists, our patients. So that really kind of, maybe let me ask you this, so you were using these the EMDR, EFT, and you went to these other things. So the only way reason that happens generally is that people find out that is, there's something not quite working. If it worked 100%, you wouldn't go any further. So what did you notice when you were using these great techniques, which we know they are, and yet somehow for some people, mm, something wasn't right? Well, in order to get the best response possible, you need to have you need to be operating on all cylinders. So I would notice, for example, if people were eating junk food, and I'm trying to do psychotherapy with them, they may be able to do it, but they can't process as clearly, and they don't remember. You know, you can have a whole session with someone, and the next time they don't even remember what you were talking about because they didn't have enough fuel in their brain to make it work properly. Hmm. So very, it just became very obvious that they needed to have, for example, the right balance of blood sugar which is eating the right proteins, fats, and carbs so that their blood sugar would be level. To have enough vitamin D so that they wouldn't be depressed, so there'd be the, the messenger's uh, ability of the vitamin D, because vitamin D is actually a chemical messenger. Right. To get enough E vitamins, these are cofactors to make the neurotransmitters, which are the chemical messengers in our brain, on and on and on. I've written several books on this. I do this every day in my practice. I love teaching it because it makes a tremendous difference in people's mental state. You know, I've uh, I got into vitamin D a while back. I, there's the vitamin D council. So based on on that idea, I've been taking 5,000 milligrams of vitamin D a day. Um, seems to make a difference. It's kind of hard to totally know these things. But what was interesting to me was the idea that the um, what the government says is one level, but to really get the full effects of this of this uh, vitamin, which is really more than a vitamin, um, you need to have a, enough level, uh, which I thought I found fascinating. Well, uh, I give everybody five thousand IU's of vitamin D daily, and in fact, the recommended daily intake is increasing. Oh, really? Um, they're, they're recommending <laughs> higher doses. They're getting more realistic about it. Wow. But like you, those who read the more um, forward literature are going to be way ahead, both in terms of themselves and their clients, because they're going to know the latest science, which is what I really attempt to do all the time. I read the science and I apply it right away, both in my teachings, my writings, and of course in my practice. And boy, does it make a difference. So perhaps we could give the people listening one really good uh, thing to be aware of between now and the, and the conference. I know you're going to have a whole lot more. Um, what's one thing that maybe either they should be they should be listening for or asking their clients or um, that would help? Uh, again, most of us are psychotherapists and not nutritionists, so I don't know that we should be prescribing per se, but at least listening. And maybe it's just eating. Obviously, don't drink so, you know, like, Soda, but let's maybe go a little totally better than that. Don't drink soda because it's not just the sugar; it's the artificial sweeteners right. that upset the balance inside your body, and you develop insulin resistance, overweight, and um, a messed up brain. 
basically. That's the technical term for it. To mess that brain. So, so <laughs> one one takeaway is a diet diet soda is no better. In fact, probably is worse than the sugary soda, right? Because of the, the all the and the, the aspartame. I've had people come in thinking they were going crazy because their brains were just not working properly. They were anxious. They couldn't sleep properly. They were um, just not in balance. And seeing another psychiatrist, they would have been placed on an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety agent. Instead, I asked them, I took a dietary history, asked what they were eating and drinking, found out they were drinking diet sodas, and actually, often they'd walk in with a can in their hands, so it was kind of a good clue right there. And when I pried it away from them, and it's hard to pry away something that's addicted, addictive, then lo and behold, their mental state cleared up. Just lose the diet soda. The other thing is, don't have dessert for breakfast. You know, people are eating cereal and milk. I mean, that is all carb. It's all simple carb. It all goes right to your. It is. It's a simple sugar, simple carb, goes right into your cells and causes insulin resistance. And it's not a good thing. We need complex carbs. We need protein for breakfast. And we need fat. Good fats. What, like what? What would be a good? What would be a good? Let's uh, have that here. Well, that'll be our walk. What would be a really good breakfast for uh, people? Like so, for me, my coffee and muffin just probably isn't a good idea, right? Uh, we, we have to throw that out. Uh, I'm afraid. Can I have the coffee at least, please? <laughs> Oh, one cup. One cup of coffee is probably okay. You just know that there are a lot of pesticides in coffee. So if you can drink organic coffee, that's a lot better for you. Okay, but beyond that, what else should people do? Okay. Forget the muffin. It's a simple carb. It's pure sugar. It's eating many, many, many tablespoons of sugar. Have some eggs because eggs have fats. They have good fats. They have choline, which is brain food. There's it's protein. And what what better can you have to make your brain cells and fat and protein? And lots of vitamins and, as I said, the choline, which is brain food. Mm -hmm. You know. Really, eggs are excellent if you need to have carbs, whole grain toast. But a lot of people, a lot of people are gluten sensitive. Now, I'll be talking about that as well. So there's so many aspects that we can distill down to some fairly, fairly simple principles. And that's, that's what I'm going to be covering. Well, I'm very excited about this. Yeah, well, I am so thrilled that you're coming. I have to say this is one of the things uh, I've been trying to get somebody to come for. We, we actually tried to get you, I think, last year and you couldn't do it. So uh, we finally got you this year. Uh, I'm I'm pumped about it. Um, thanks so much, and um, I'll see you in a in a few months. Great, I really look forward to it. All right, take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye.